the precious blood of Jesus Christ, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness, that He might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Romans chapter 3 verses 24 to 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread, and blessed, and brake it, and gave to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Mark chapter 14 verses 22 to 24. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Luke chapter 22 verses 19 to 20. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. John chapter 6 verses 53 to 56 Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood Acts chapter 20 verses 26 to 28. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16. After the same manner also he took the cup which he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25-27 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh, by the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 to 14. And having being made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. 
For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, first wherein was the candlestick, and a table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while well, as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19.
of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, and an holy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 29 And to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 11 to 12. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 to 21. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. First Peter chapter 1 verse 2. For as much as ye you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, and silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18 to 19. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. 1 John chapter 5 verses 6 to 9. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 to 6. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, This are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture deep in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Revelation chapter 19 Verses 11 to 14. Let us look steadfastly to the blood of Christ and see how precious his blood is in the sight of God, which being shed for our salvation has obtained the grace of repentance for all the world. First Epistle of Clement to Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5. And they gave her moreover a sign that she should hang out of her house a scarlet robe shaving thereby that by the blood of our Lord there should be redemption to all that believe and hope 
in God. You see, beloved, how there was not only faith, but prophecy too in this woman. First Epistle of Clement to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 10. Let us reverence our Lord Jesus Christ, whose blood was given for us. First Epistle of Clement to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 6. Through charity did the Lord join us unto himself, whilst for the love that he bore toward us, our Lord Jesus Christ gave his own blood for us. May the will of God, his flesh for our flesh, his soul for our souls. First Epistle of Clement to the Corinthians, chapter 21, verse 7. For this cause did our Lord vouchsafe to give up his body to destruction, that through the forgiveness of our sins we might be sanctified, that is, by the sprinkling of his blood. For thus saith the scripture, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and by his blood we are healed. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shivers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. General Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 4, verses 1 and 3. How that being followers of God, and stirring up yourselves by the blood of Christ, ye have perfectly accomplished the work that was connatural unto you. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3. Ignatius, who is called Theophorus, to the Holy Church which is at Tralles in Asia, beloved of God the Father of Jesus Christ, elect and worthy of God, having peace through the flesh and blood, and passion of Jesus Christ our hope, in the resurrection which is by Him, which also I salute in its fullness, continuing in the apostolical character, wishing all joy and happiness unto it. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Trallians, chapter 1, verse 1. Wherefore, putting on meekness, renew yourselves in faith, that is, the flesh of the Lord, and in charity, that is, the blood of Jesus Christ. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Trallians, chapter 2, verse 7. I desire the bread of God, which is the flesh of Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, and the drink that I long for is his blood, which is incorruptible love. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Romans, chapter 3, verse 5. Ignatius, who is also called Theophorus, to the Church of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, which is at Philadelphia in Asia, which has obtained mercy, being fixed in the concord of God, and rejoicing evermore in the passion of our Lord, and being fulfilled in all mercy through his resurrection, which also I salute in the blood of Jesus Christ, which is our eternal and undefiled joy, especially if they are at unity with the bishop and presbyters who are with him, and the deacons appointed according to the mind of Jesus Christ, whom he has settled according to his own will in all firmness by his Holy Spirit. For there is but one flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ, and one cup in the unity of his blood, one altar, the epistle of Ignatius to the Philadelphians, chapter 1, verses 1 and 11. For I have observed that you are settled in an immovable faith, as if you were nailed to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, both in the flesh and in the spirit, and are confirmed in love through the blood of Christ, being fully persuaded of those things which relate unto our Lord. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Smyrnians, chapter 1, verse 3. Let no man deceive himself. Both the things which are in heaven and the glorious angels and princes, whether visible or invisible, if they believe not in the blood of Christ, it shall be to them to condemnation. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Smyrnians, chapter 2, verse 12. I salute your very worthy bishop and your venerable presbytery and your deacons, my fellow servants, and all of you in general, and everyone in particular, in the name of Jesus Christ, and in his flesh and blood, in his passion and resurrection, both fleshly and spiritually, and in the unity of God with you. The Epistle of Ignatius to the Smyrnians, chapter 3, verse 22. To whom all things are made subject, both that are in heaven and that are in earth, whom every living creature shall worship, who shall come to be the judge of the creed and dead, whose blood God shall require of them that believe in him. The Epistle of Polycarp to the Philippians, chapter 1, verse 7. But they that shall not keep his commands flee from their life and are adversaries to it, 
and they that follow not his commands shall deliver themselves unto death, and shall be everyone guilty of his own blood. The third book of Hermes, chapter 10, verse 13. They therefore considered one with another whether to go away and show these things to Pilate. And while they yet thought thereon, the heavens again are seen to open, and a certain man to descend and enter into the sepulchre. When the centurion and they that were with him saw these things, they hastened in the night to Pilate, leaving the tomb which they were watching, and declared all things which they had seen, being greatly distressed, and saying, Truly he was the Son of God. Pilate answered and said, I am pure from the blood of the Son of God, but it was he who determined this. Then they all drew near and besought him and entreated him to command the centurion and the soldiers to say nothing of the things which they had seen. For it is better, say they, for us to be guilty of the greatest sin before God, and not to fall into the hands of the people of the Jews and to be stoned. Pilate therefore commanded the centurion and the soldiers to say nothing. The Lost Gospel according to Peter, chapter 1, verse 11. Then came the word of God to Adam, and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. The first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 24, verses 4 to 5. And again, as regards the water of life thou seekest, it will not be granted thee this day, but on the day that I shall shed my blood upon thy head in the land of Golgotha. For my blood shall be the water of life unto thee at that time, and not to thee alone, but unto all those of thy seed who shall believe in me, that it be unto them for rest forever. The first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 42, verses 7 to 8. God said further unto Adam, Thus will it also happen to me on the earth, when I shall be pierced, and blood shall flow blood and water from my side, and run over my body, which is the true offering, and which shall be offered on the altar as a perfect offering. The first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 69, verse 6.